at least one of them flew in the rhino and hit me on the chest. And I've got my eye on the patient down south as well. And I couldn't stop and had this seagull in the passenger seat. And the whole thing was just really weird for me. So I just kept driving. Got to the patient and I realised he's a big bugger. So I got him on the board. He's got him now. And started paddling back and here comes a wave. And I thought, beauty, straight back to shore. Probably about half a second before the wave hit, I thought, oh, this guy's a bit far forward, actually. In his quest to master the board rescue, Tommy invents a technique of his own. I hit the water and surface, and my first thoughts was, how the hell did I just do that? And I just felt this slow motion lift like the aircraft taking off. I was up near the helicopters doing their tour guides around Bondi. I was pretty high. Well, what goes up must come down. 17-year-old <laughs> trainee Noah is starting with the fundamentals. We need to bring the signs down close to the water. Yeah. But on Bondi, just digging a hole takes a certain level of skill. Yeah, I'm not confident with this one. I'm doing the flags. They just don't feel secure at all. You're digging crab holes, are you? I'm digging good holes. Good holes or good crab holes? holes? Like, solid holes. And he reckons that they're not deep enough, so if he's giving himself up, chances are that they're not deep enough. Yeah, they're not good. I gave him one job. If a sign falls on someone, two weeks in the job, let's just say he won't be employed for 2020. I injured myself six weeks ago down at Bronny, doing a rescue. Since then, I've just been doing all the paperwork, and uh, watching the water. He's doing a great job watching the water and helping us out, but he drives a couple of the boys mad with a couple of his antics. He dead set thinks he's getting around yeah, like yeah, Hoppo. Yeah. You gotta do a bit more work. A few of the boys have been ripping into him, and you know, it's all tongue and cheek. So, Skunk, I've got this boot polish. I think we need to put him in his place a little bit. Get him with the old boot polish on the binos trick. What do you reckon? <laughs> <Just don't. laughs> yeah, the boys love a prank. If you don't get pranked, you're not really liked, so. You know, all the blokes that haven't been pranked, no one likes you. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch the water while I do this. Oh, right. I knew that I was getting pranked, but I didn't know what it was at the time. <laughs> What's that Muppet's name? Uh, the Count. <laughs> I've definitely got like black around my eyes, eh? Black around my eyes. <laughs> Chavo couldn't stop laughing. And um, yeah, I went and looked in the mirror and there was big shoe polish marks on my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Where are you? I, I, how, did I get, how did I get that? It's been like that for ages. <laughs> really? <laughs> Why do you think I'm laughing at you? It's all tongue in cheek. And you know, he's, he's a good sport. He can cop it. Nice mascara, dude. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> that was a good one. That got me pretty good. Launching the jet ski usually takes two people, but Ryan decides to attempt it on his own. The rationale is just to, yeah, make the job as easy as possible and alleviate a bit of need for manpower. Without a helper, Ryan reverses the buggy a little deeper than usual. As Jethro searches the water, Ryan's one-man jet ski launch hasn't gone to plan. The young guys, a big job comes in, they like to rush. There's no thinking, it's getting done quickly. And this is a problem, this is when trouble happens. It was just me and Jet, so yeah, I didn't want to have to be stuffing around with it, so I tried to get it, yeah, nice and deep. Ryan gets little sympathy from senior lifeguards. What yeah. happened, did it break down or he just got bombed? No, he put it in, just hey. got bombed. Dude, that was the worst launch I've ever seen. On this occasion, I could feel my heart sinking and the cat am sinking at the same time. 
Yeah, so we got two young lifeguards. They're trying to impress, and they took on a solid shore break at dead high tide, and they just come off second best. Doug called for Mouse, and yeah, I was stoked to see him. Ready? I was like, this is heavy. We've got a heavy situation here. A six foot swell and an incoming tide don't help Ryan's hopes for a quick recovery of the $20,000 buggy. Oh, overriding emotion was I'm in the sh. <laughs> I mean, you would never think that it could be possible, but the waves and the ocean are so powerful. Like, it's totally capable of, like, literally sucking the buggy right into the water and, and not getting it out, like, ever. <laughs> and it was on the way. I honestly thought we were going to lose the buggy. The wave's going to keep coming and the tide was coming up and um, we just did not have a very big window of opportunity here. As the waves were hitting it, the engine was still on, so it was doing pretty well. And then Mouse got in the driver's seat and this wave just come over the back. That's it, it's dead, mate, it's dead. Yeah? Yeah, it's dead. And the engine cut off and, yeah, I knew I'd stopped it then. The buggy is at risk of being completely swallowed by the tide. Mouse calls for community assistance. Luckily, Chapo was there on his day off and uh, I just recruited two other blokes that were watching and um, we just all got behind it. Can you help us push this car out? Can you help us? All these guys are going to help you push it. Yeah. This isn't a rescue which lifeguards will proudly record in their daily report. And the flooded buggy won't be revived either. Instead, it'll be sent for intensive care at the mechanics. The jet ski's gonna have to stay in the water now because we've got no buggy. Unfazed by the experience, <laughs> Ryan feels there's some positives. Jet ski got in the water, that job got done. <laughs> Ryan's part of Gen Y, and Gen Y know everything. You can't teach him. Oh, no, that's at least six weeks of cleaning the tower. After two hours, the search for a body reportedly seen near North Bondi headland is called off. Yeah, do you want to come in? When beaching the jet ski, lifeguards must turn off the engine while simultaneously running the ski up the sand. It's a multitasking job that can easily go wrong. <laughs> you all right? When I first hear it, I instantly felt like a shooting pain. I had a good laugh at him and I felt terrible. And then he's just going, oh, not good. And I knew he popped his shoulder straight away. Take a deep breath. For the second time this morning, a young lifeguard has got himself into strife. Oh my, someone come down and give me a hand. Jeff's popped his shoulder coming off the ski. Have you done it before? Oh, no. Nah. No? Nah. They just support your arm. Oh. That's it, take deep breath. Deep breath. Whistle me up, baby. Come on. Get the whistle. Yeah. Lifeguards normally administer pain-killing gas to injured beachgoers. Get the finger over it, mate. Today, it's Jethro that will get a taste of the green whistle. Nah, good, 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 good. Keep sucking, keep sucking, keep sucking. The green whistle seems to affect everyone in such a diverse way, and Jethro not being too big of a guy, it affected him quite quickly. Pop the locker and take me to Charlestown. <laughs> Have <laughs> crew prepare the doors for landing. <laughs> he might have been even flying a 747 at one stage. Since you're a captain <laughs> speaking, you would be the most gorgeous flight attendant too. I should have been a flight attendant. <laughs> Keep sucking up. Paramedics have been called. Until then, lifeguards manage Jethro's pain. This is whistle number two. After the second whistle, I have no recollection of what I said. I know I could have said anything. Paramount <laughs> <laughs> eel. Paramount <laughs> eel. 
this extended care paramedic will attempt to relocate Jethro's shoulder on the first aid bed. Have you ever dislocated your shoulder before? No, no first time. And another important caregiver shows up. Jethro's girlfriend, Kaya. Okay. If it is just an anterior dislocation and everything's all right, we'll just see if we can relocate it. Lifeguards deal with dislocations every week, but they are less used to seeing one of their own in pain. Despite the paramedics' best attempts, Jethro's shoulder can't be relocated here. One, two, three, lift. In hospital, Jethro will learn if his lifeguarding season is over. We've got a parade going on between Ronnie IOB and Bacon. I'll put my money on Bacon. It's man versus machine to get to the surfer. Yeah, I think Bacon's won the race. Uh, thanks for that anyway. On night, we uh, won't need the jet ski. The surfer is transferred to the IRB for the trip to shore. Oh, legend. Bacon charts a safe course back away from the reef. But the rescued surfer is being taken on a far more dangerous path. Oh, they're going to get slow. They're going to hit the reef. Oh, 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 oh. The rescued surfer could now be in much bigger trouble. He's, he's just behind, he's behind the boat. Yeah, no. No, 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 they're there, they're there. Luckily, the only casualty is the boat captain's pride. <laughs> I was having lunch in the back room and I heard people roaring. <laughs> it wasn't the ride Brazilian surfer Jose was expecting. Did you hit any rocks? No, no. My good news. I was lucky, man. <laughs> lucky twice. I caught a wave out the back and by the time I turned back around, there was people scattered across the rocks. All over, except for an uncomfortable march past Harry's. New recruit Boo is an experienced jet ski operator, but this is his first emergency jet ski launch at Bondi. Trying to get the bath? I'll get this. There's a bit of swell running, and there was a bit of a shore break as well, and the ramp's pretty steep at the moment. It's going to be hard. He reversed it like, like normal, but he was going a bit to the side. I go straight. And then I went a little bit more. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to have to go forward. This summer, Bondi has had a notoriously bad shore break. Jet ski launches must be completed quickly. That one bit of hesitation. What are they doing? Then it's game over. Yeah, yeah, go forward, go forward. And that's exactly what happened. Oh, sh. Oh, no. Oh, oh. oh wait, oh, wait. Another wrong move, and a half ton of jet ski. Yeah, push, push, push. Could easily break bones. Turn it, turn it this way, this way. But lifeguards must respond to the emergency offshore. All good? Rolling the jet ski onto dry sand oh. would be catastrophic for man and machine. Oh, no. Are you all right? Yeah, Nick's gonna get that buggy out of there. <laughs> On his lunch break, Jesse notices the commotion. Wait, go get the other buggy. Jump in. <laughs> Jesse is faced with a quickly rising tide. I need to get this buggy out before it either gets sucked out to sea or it doesn't work again. Jackson, push this. Wait. Go, go, go. I had the shovel trying to dig the front tyres out, but that wasn't doing anything. Normally, lifeguards help the public. Everyone, help! Help! But occasionally, the roles are reversed. Everyone, help! One, two, three, go, go, go. Jesse puts one foot on the accelerator. Get up, get up. 
the other foot helps push. Fred Flintstone uses his foot too, so that seems to work for him and it seemed to work for me. And <laughs> <laughs> they did it. They did it. We did it. Come on, a bit of an angle. Thought everything was all right. Done it a million times before. Bogged it. Had an absolute shocker. It was late afternoon. It was a pretty busy day. I locked up the tower. I went, you know what, I'll, I'll go in there and clean it up. Get some good, good points to my name. So I went in there to clean it up. When I went in there, I was only propping the door open with my foot. My foot slipped off. <laughs> and just all came crashing down, and that was the end of it. Yeah, North Tower to Chapo, pack up. Yeah, Chapo. Probably not gonna believe this one, but I was semi stuck in the tower, eh? The door and the roof just shut on me and I, I can't get out. So yeah, when I radioed in, there was about 10 seconds of silence going, what? Like, no one could really understand, and then it was just pure laughter. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty heavy. I'm, I'm stuck. The door's not opening, eh? <laughs> You think you've seen everything? Trainees, they always come up with something new, don't they? Yeah, unfortunately, Hoppo was on. Hoppo was in the tower, so he watched the whole event unfold. Not only is Jethro stuck, but none of his brothers in blue are rushing to the rescue. They were just waiting. No one was helping me. We don't think we're just going to leave him there till tomorrow morning when we open it up. Oh, rescue! I got stuck. What are you doing there, bro? I got stuck. Are you serious? <laughs> you couldn't get out. Reedy didn't even know I was in there. Reedy just came by and found me in there. So thank God Reedy was around. He's finally managed to fly the coop, but now Jethro has to face his boss, Hoppo. Have you got an explanation on how it actually yeah, happened? Yeah, I was using my back foot to hold it open. And I leaned in a little bit too far, my foot slipped. And it all just shut. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long afternoon, but that's just made my day. For a man who's spent a lifetime surfing, there's nothing quite so special as a brand new surfboard. The former pro surfer has selflessly lent it to Maxi during his lunch break. He might be a young gun lifeguard, but he's still got a long way to go as a surfer. Maxi has put a big hole in Kerbox's pride and joy. It's not my fault. It's funny. No, it's not funny. I'm laughing because he's going to kill me. I was there when he said to you, yeah, whatever yeah. you do, don't. Yeah. Don't what? Ding it. Don't ding it. But it wasn't me. What happened? You just ran him over, did you? Oh, he was on the way, and I tried to get out of the way, but I couldn't get out fast enough. But being the one riding the wave, it was Maxie's responsibility to avoid a collision. Don't blame the 12 year olds, just say that thing to board. Sorry. I'm bowing because I know it wasn't my fault. And they're, look, look, they're just going. So they probably don't even have a job. They can't even pay for themselves. <laughs> Max, please let me be there when you break it to him. Back from lunch. Kerbox has no idea what's happened. You know, Kerbox, I'm sure, he wouldn't really be worried about the value, but it's more just Maxie's uh, careless attitude. <laughs> he just likes to tear into things, and uh, I think that's what's happened here. Kids out there. Spanky, you Kids out there. We'll go get him. Come on, let's go. We'll go get him. Terry let him go because he was young. He was like 12 and he goes, he doesn't have any money to pay for it. I'll go, you're coming up here. And then you bring yourself to get this. The thing is, the last thing he said to me, don't let me do, do don't, don't ding wreck my, my board. board. <laughs> I don't believe it. There's a way you go and you might not even have a job. <laughs> huh? What am I going to do? Ah, uh, yeah. 
Mate, that's, nice. a, that's a dead set good then. So, yeah, pretty devastated, really. It's not new anymore. Bob, can I borrow your board? I'm so it's damaged. Harry's marriage proposal is just a week away. He's keen to look his best. But Kerbox has other plans. He loves his physique, loves his appearance, and we've sneakily got him to the salon here to have some fun with him. Hoppo and Kerbox have convinced Harry's to top up his tan before the proposal. We're going to get him in the booth, we're going to strip him, we're going to spray him. But they omitted one important fact. Unfortunately, it's going to be the wrong colour. We're going to nail him. <laughs> He's been a little bit pale this summer, hasn't been that good, so I thought <laughs> yeah. I'll shout him up here. I'll just get you to put on this G-string. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, Hoppo, what have you got me into here? <laughs> That's a breathing apparatus. <laughs> That's for SARS. <laughs> I can't put that over me. <laughs> Oh, you're hilarious. It looks good. You can't be serious. It is. Mate, you need a lot of work. <laughs> With blacked out goggles and close to nude, Harry's couldn't be more vulnerable. Are you just going for the natural look? Yeah, just natural. Is that low? Pardon? That's low, isn't it? Yeah, that's low enough. Yeah, you'll be right. Yeah. yeah. I nearly peed my pants because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> yeah, I oh, it worked out really. <laughs> Harry's retreats to the showers. What are you doing? Only to find more hecklers. What do you need spray yeah. here for? You oh, work on a beach. <laughs> Can you? Get, get your ring out. No, I'm yeah. serious, I have Come to go. On. Get your give us a quick look. I've got to go. I'm happy with Barry. Where are you going, mate? Smurf. You never see him angry, but he's quite clearly angry, isn't he? No, he's fuming. Yeah. <laughs> He's blue. He looks like a Smurf. No, I just tell him quickly what happened. Wait, I still look that much better than you. <laughs> <laughs> you look awful. Jesse collects the first boy. He cuts the engine to avoid sucking rope into the jet intake. But he didn't cut the engine early enough. The rope is caught in the intake. Jesse puts the ski in reverse to try and blow the rope back out. Big swell and growing darkness, it's a dire situation. I'm stuck out here. The, the skis ran over the rope. Lifeguards launch the second jet ski. <laughs> these sets comes through and cleans him up, he could, the ski would get totaled or the ski could get washed up the rocks. Can you get it out? It's got sucked straight up the jet. As Jesse flounders, the rescue party can't make it through the waves. It's gonna take him a while to get through this break in the skis. Three of them on there. Shit, the boys are struggling there to get through. Popo watches silently as lifeguards are forced to rescue one of their own. 
Sucked up the intake of the jet ski. Rookie mistake. The boss is not happy. As darkness approaches, Jesse is stranded 400 metres from shore in huge seas. Oh, look at this set coming through now. The rescue team can't get out. Finally, a lull in the waves. They're going to have to go under and cut it out of the engine. The buoy is cut loose but the rope is still caught in the intake. The stricken jet ski is now a 400 kilogram dead weight in eight foot surf. Towing it to shore is too dangerous. There's only one alternative. They're gonna have to surf it in, it should be interesting. With light fading fast, Maxi and Dino kick to shore. The wave looms. but spares them. We're in a good spot there anyway. If they get a bit further, they'll be in a At the most critical point, finally, some luck. They've got the best wall in the day. Just behind the whitewash. Suddenly, a wave peaks. The lifeguard's instincts kick in. They're on a wave. They're on a wave. They got it. The rescue quickly becomes folklore. There's a god. There is a god. What happened there? The biggest lull of the day. We were bringing it in. Was that, Eight eh? foot set. Oh, mate. We oh. kicked out, waited for the massive set to come through, and then I said, go, go hard, because you've got to get through that impact zone. Could be deadly. So I jumped in the rhino, and I knew I didn't have a lot of time. This guy was in a really bad way, and I had a fair bit of ground to cover, so. I, uh, I hit the gas and, and floored the, the rhino. Jethro noticed me in my haste and joined in as well. I just thought, I'll go with him, and the call came through, yeah, Jeff, back him up. And it was, it was pedal to the metal, like, we were going. I pretty much had the rhino going flat stick as fast as it could go, and on the way down, I encountered a flock of seagulls, and uh, I couldn't really break or anything. Singlets has gone straight through the guts of a, of a flock of seagulls. At least one of them flew in the rhino, and hit me on the chest and I've got my eye on the patient down south as well and I couldn't stop and I had this seagull in the passenger seat and the whole thing was just really weird for me so I just kept driving. I got down to the patient and unloaded the board and the seagull had fallen out of the seat so I don't know where it had gone at that stage but like I said my priority was this patient because he was going under. I think one of them's almost got washed in but one's still clinging to the surfer's board like he's gonna die. Jethro reaches the first man. Oh, Jethro's been brushed. Good. Thanks, Jethro. Singlets heads for the second man, who has been saved by a surfer. He was kind of really relieved to see me, a Colombian guy, really out of breath and looked like he was probably on his last couple of strokes. All good. Folsom's got his blade and Jethro's just got, got wet. With both men safe, Singlets turns his attention back to the seagull. When we got out, Singo said to me, Mate, I killed a seagull. And it was like he murdered a human. He was so rattled. Yeah, it's pretty out of shape, isn't it? He said, Jeff, mate, he was in the passenger seat. I hit it and it was in the passenger seat. And he, he looked like he was about to cry, man. <laughs> I feel bad. 
But there was not really much I could do. I was just like, oh, no, this can't be real, you know? Especially, you know, we spend so much time on the beach with these seagulls. They're like our buddies, you know? We thought we better pay all due respect, you know? It was just sitting on the sand and we sort of cut its life a little bit short. We thought, you know what, we'll, we'll do the good thing and we'll, we'll bury it and we'll give it a little ceremony and a couple of words and send him off. <laughs> yeah, I think the seagull's gone to a better place and, uh, yeah, definitely sort of... Buried him on the beach, where else would he want to be? I've got a very good driving record. Like, I'm pretty handy with the reverse, um, with the trailer. Normally, if you'd be reversing, like, a trailer or a caravan, you're going to have your mirrors, your middle and your two sides. This one, you've got a rubber neck, and it can go wrong quite quick. Despite an impeccable driving record, Vagus has run his buggy aground. There wasn't a ramp, basically. It was nothing I could do. It was clearly Mother Nature's fault for digging out all the sand. So jammed. I jammed it. Jammed it hard. Whether he wants it or not, Vagus is about to get a whole heap of advice. One way, central to North Tower. Go ahead. Can we just get one of you guys just to walk up here? Um, just, just at the moment, just got a problem with the mic. Yeah, copy. What's happened? Nothing's happened. When I arrived, Vegas was still quite confident, but that confidence quickly diminished. Ready? Oh, the wheels were fully covered. It was the deepest bog I've seen. So I sort of came down with a fresh set of eyes. But surely if we could get towed out, we can build the sand back up. Start yeah. again. The young recruit's advice is falling on deaf ears. Can you get that sandbag? Is that loose? Yeah, because then you can put it under the wheel. Yeah, that's it. That should work. Go. I thought the logical solution would just be to tow it out with the other buggy. We have two buggies, one's bogged, one's not. Well, the other buggy would just be able to tow us out, won't it? But, yeah, I got shut down pretty quick, and the boys seemed to think that they had better ideas. All right, let's try the diff lock. I'm going to go forward. Yeah, sweet. OK, look out. Here we go. Ready, set, go. No, no, you need to get towed. Knockoff time is just minutes away. We couldn't get it out, and we tried and tried, and then more people come up, and let's try this and that. <laughs> yeah, damaged tubes, snap ramps, snap 4B2s. It wasn't budging. What about we just try to tow it with the other one? Finally, Fatty takes matters into his own hands. I'm going to go get the other buggy and tow this out. Oh, so you got a rope? <laughs> Grab the buggy, pull it around, tie it to the bogs buggy. Hit the gas. Slow, slow, slow. Go, go. Stop, stop, stop. Perfect, I was stoked. My solution was the, the winner. Put that one into park, can you, please? So it doesn't roll back. After finally solving the problem, surely Fatty is due some recognition. Fatty thinks he, he knew, but he's a he's a young pup. Like, he don't, I don't even know if he can reverse the trailer in. Oh, I think Baggis might take claim because he's a little, bit, a little bit embarrassed that he bogged it in the first place. Down and... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I would like to thank the team. Great work. I'd like to also blame Mother Nature for digging out that um, drop-off. Clearly had nothing to do with me. <laughs> 30 minutes after his first attempt, Vagus is finally getting the job done. No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, Vagus! <laughs> it was a good feeling. It was <laughs> nice to just squeeze in before wow. knock-off and um, sandy and sweaty, good shower and a cold beer, it's sort of... Everything can be relaxed again. Yeah, and it was—it was wasn't my fault.